Hello, I'm Robert. Uh, welcome to my channel and where I help people who are scared of many things. And this time it's about the cold weather storms in Texas, and which are also affecting Mexico and quite a lot of states all the way up to North Dakota actually are having these rolling blackouts. So I just want to explain a little bit about what's happening. First of all, people get puzzled. They think, how can you have such cold weather with global warming? So what is happening here? is uh, this is the jet stream and a jet stream has developed a kink in it and it tends to do that amongst other situations when there's a warm uh, arctic so it's actually quite a normal thing with warming and as the world warms up there's less difference in temperature because you get more convection so you get more warmth in the at the poles in a warmer world because it's more convection because there's uh, you get more in a warmer world and then you and then with that a smaller difference then you get these kinky uh, jet stream things so it's cold inside but although it's a little bit warmer it's obviously much colder than normally in the United States that's the Arctic weather from up there you can, can bring it down a bit there we are let's wait for it to appear again so you can see you know th this is warmer than normal but you've got it's a bit colder than you'd expect in the United States because it's dipped down and normally, a lot of the time, it's just a perfectly, almost perfectly circular jet stream like that. And then when you get these dips, you get warmer up there because you've got warm air pushed upwards there, you see. You've got cold air pushed downwards there. And that's why it's getting so cold in Texas, even though the world as a whole is not getting colder. It's not, the world doesn't get cold just because it's cold in Texas. So that's basically what's happened there. And it's not going to last that long because eventually the warm weather will start coming around the kinks will move around and then that's the end of your cold bit and then you get another cold bit and so on so that's how it works and this is my summary of how, how it works so you've got arctic warmer than usual cold air a wavy jet stream warm air and then a warm and, and cold air averages out so when texas is cold weather it doesn't mean the world is colder so that's what's happened so why did that cause such big problems for Texas? Well, because Texas, I mean, you'd, you'd think that would be causing problems you know, way up here in the very cold countries. Why should it? Why should the warmest places in uh, the United States be the ones that are being affected? And the reason is, it's, it's precisely because Texas is so warm that it very seldom has to deal with cold weather like this. And so, the, and they, the last time this happened was in 2011. And exactly the same thing happened then as happened now. And power cuts and, and problems with supplying enough power. And then they actually had a commission, they came up with this report and they said that you have to uh, you have to increase the amount of winterization, which is making your making it so that your power plants and everything are able to withstand cold weather. But they didn't make it a legal requirement, like apparently it is in many states. And so the uh, the utility companies they were told you know you, you should really increase your make, make sure that all your equip, equipment will, will can deal with the very occasional uh, cold weather every few years but this was a very expensive thing to do for a country for a state that's not used to doing it it's a small percent of their total but it's a lot of money you talk about millions of dollars and so they just didn't do it because they weren't forced to and so that's why it's now but if they, if they, uh, the same utility company, even probably possibly even the same people, you know, but in a, a more northerly state, then they would harden their, their um, everything. So that was part of it, but that's not the whole of it. <coughs> it also, the cold air, uh, it was mainly things like uh, wind turbines, and they just got sort of got froze and weren't turning around. And then there was um, gas, um, so. Texas has a lot of fracking, and the uh, and the and the fracking uh, gas pipes. And when it gets too cold, then they stop it, and they, they just uh, sh shut them off for safety thing. So a lot of the uh, the gas fracking, then it, it was just stopped. So and then it turned out that Texas hasn't got stockpiles of gas to deal with that situation. It soon soon went through what it had got. And 
then the uh, so you, the combination of less gas so there's less gas to fire the gas fired power stations it's very cold and so people started using the electricity and a lot of homes heated with electricity and they were using a lot of electricity and so there was a 20 percent increase in the amount of electricity at the same time there's a reduction in the amount of gas that was available and and also a reduction in the electricity from wind turbines and then this also had a knock-on effect on mexico because mexico 60 percent of the mexico power electric electricity comes from gas and most of the gas from for mexico comes from texas texas uh, Mex mexico has laws prohibiting fracking so you don't you can't do fracking in mexico so they import the gas from the fracking in texas so uh and the, there were people in in the it, it even rather bizarre but texas this this lobby saying we should they should do the they should uh incentivize renewables but for some reason they because they're they're the state-run gas utility company that uh that provides 60 percent of the electricity for mexico then it is running into problems and so the uh one of the people one of the gov governor people i can't remember his his title but he's very keen on making sure that the the mexican uh, gas utility that's owned by the government continues to earn money so he has put subsidies into into gas instead of into renewables which is very controversial and so as a result of all that then uh, Mexico is very dependent on gas and then it just is expecting all the gas from Texas and pipes so the pipes from Texas to Mexico and and so uh, 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 and suddenly that dried up because Mexico uh, Texas didn't have enough even for itself so this all this all just a temporary thing so Mexico had never done any planning for this so they are getting in uh, gas on fire tanker a perfectly acceptable way to get in, in gas but they haven't got it yet and so mexico was just suddenly struck with no not enough gas for its uh, electricity which is 60 percent of its power and only 40 percent is renewables and so there was not much that uh, and, and, and i'm not sure what all the everything is for the other 40 percent there might be some other fossil fuels i'm not sure but anyway uh, so Mex so mexico was suddenly hit with a big impact on 60 percent of its electricity and so uh, first of all there were kind of uncontrolled kind of just um power cut power cut for five million people and now they've got it more under control what they're doing is rolling blackouts and it's the same thing in the united states as well so there's actually uh, states all the way up to north dakota uh, i if i bring up the i bring up the power grid just a minute i'll bring up the power grid map <coughs> Oh, this is a much better one than one I found before. Just get a very simplified idea of how the electricity grids work in the United States. So you've got uh, Texas for political reasons. There's no actual technical reason. And Texas is a grid that is entirely enclosed within Texas, and is that is in is operated federally. Uh, sorry, not federally, state-wise. So it has no. If it was crossing two states, then it would be federal involvement. And because it's entirely in, in, included in Texas and Texas can be entirely in charge of its own power grid and so there's the Texas power grid and there's Eastern Interconnect and there's Western Interconnect and there's very little uh, communication between the two and so anyway when Texas ran into problems it started using uh, using power all the way up to North Dakota so what what this is a particular utility company so you have as on in addition to that you have these utility companies so that's that i think that's was, whether it's maybe it's that one i'm not sure um but the power market is that the power market so uh it's it's, it's immensely complicated i have no idea i don't really understand it uh, uh, how it works but for whatever reason then there's a, a company that's using in that is has got a little bit of foothold in mexico in, in texas that also sp uh, supplies all the way up to north dakota and so in order to dis distribute its its problems then it's got these rolling blackouts that are going back and forth all the way through 
and the way a rolling blackout works, it's controlled. So in, instead of just the power just randomly, someone is off uh, completely for a day, two days or something, and other people are just normal. With a rolling blackout, you control who is uh, cut off at any time. This is much better also for hospitals and things. So they've always got some power. If a hospital will have an uninterruptible, uninterruptible power supply, so it can cope with having the power cut for an hour or something like that. So what you do with these rolling, rolling power cuts, then you you have the uh, uh, a, a few thousand people will have their power cut off for uh, say for instance one community would might be cut off from twelve to one, and then at the end of one they're reconnected. Then they connect another community is cut off from one to two, and another community from two to three each just a few thousand people. And so any particular person has just got, your house is going to lose power maybe for an hour, uh, or it could be two hours, but I think it, this one is using an hour as its time. And Mexico is simply using, I think it's using longer time periods. But you're, you're, so you have the, uh, so you just like little waves of cutouts of power around there. And that means that any particular state is not going to lose power for very long. In, in any particular area of FEC. Indeed, even the whole state doesn't lose power. Just a few thousand here, and then a few thousand there, and then a few thousand there. It just rolls around like that. And because it's, it's spread out over all these states, for, uh, 14 different states, all the way up to North Dakota, then each individual state is only receiving a little bit of impact from what would have been a huge power uh, cutout if it was located all within Texas. And that's one particular utility company that's got a very large area of the United States that it covers. And so that's how it's handling it. So, uh, so that's what's happening in the United States and in, in, and in Texas as well. So they, 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 uh, they, they will be, they, they, this is going to continue. And then the forecast is this will continue to about Thursday. And then there's going to be warmer, drier weather for a while. And then it's going to be more cold weather again, uh, um, but not quite so cold. And so it's going to be easy, it's going to ease off. It's going to be easier uh, the last week of February and going into March, it's just because it's warmer weather and it's just going to gradually get easier. But so it's really the main problems just for another couple of days that you really need to uh, really the main problems. And it's very much a similar situation in Mexico that they're doing these rolling blackouts um, in, in connected states in order to spread the problem and have less of a problem. And so this is completely preventable. Indeed, people were warning about it in the past, before it happened, but the uh, utility companies just didn't react in time. And so it, was, it, could have, it could have been foreseen. It was foreseen. It was warned about in 2011. And so it's really a question it, it, is it, are the companies going to be forced to do the upgrades or are they going to unlikely actually decide themselves to do it because it's a quite costly and it's only going to happen every few years. So that's a thing that's going to be, they may well pass new laws, we just have to see what happens. But uh, that's, that's basically the problem. And the, the, but if you're in one of these colder states up here, then, um, then you're, you're going to have a, a you're, you're not going to have these problems because your power supply will be winterized already. And in, I, I can't, it's really quite difficult to search when, you, when something like this, you've got power cuts happening in Texas, you try and look at what are the precautions done to winterize in other states. And it comes up with home utility, home winterization, and then it comes up with things about Texas. Like I had a really quite difficult time to search to try and find out how it works in the rest of the country. But the, uh, they must have, um, the, the, the article I read about Texas said that, there's, there's, that it's unusual in not, being, not having an actual mandate that they have to winterize and because it's so warm. So I assume that most of these states have a mandate and that you absolutely have to winterize if you're a public utility company. And so it may be even the same utility company that not winterizing there and winterizing up there. Anyway, uh, so 
that's the prediction and that's about how it happened so it wouldn't happen in a, it wouldn't happen in a colder state and of course i mean you've got power utilities in canada for instance in russia uh, with permafrost and so on so it's not it's not a problem with solar power it's not a problem with wind power and when uh, you get people also talking about oh what happens if you have snow falls on solar panels and the answer is that if you're in a part of the world that has snow falling on solar panels then you have the panels steeper and you might make it so the panels can move and then they just the snow just slides off them so you can just lift up the, if you're a power plant if you're a homeowner you have a snow rake you just rake the snow off your solar panels so it's uh, it's certainly well d d d you can deal with it and uh, actually have swiveling panels and they just swivel up to and all the snow falls off and the, the various ways you can deal with it so it's not it's not really a problem with solar panels it's just a problem with that the solar panels in texas are not winterized either so um so that's and and then it it, it will be a judgment according to how many how many snow days you have in a year and what other kind of power you've got and so on as to whether it's worth to have the extra expense of having snow solar panels that can clear themselves so uh, that, that's basically it isn't it what else do I have to explain I've explained about the rolling blackouts the rolling blackouts in 12 Mexican states I couldn't figure out how long it was I explained how it, how it works I've done that and why it was affected um, because it didn't winterize it was warm and there was all these and then how it happens is the wavy jet stream and then so the last thing I just want to talk about is how do you protect your own home so you do if it, when it comes to utilities then you don't uh, the utility company they're the ones who are doing it you, you're not really involved in it you just they, they um, so, so, unless that's your job so the, but there are going to be people working way very hard uh, both protecting these things and then doing their best to try and try and get things back working again and so on and and then there'll be serious discussions in the legislature surely about whether they need a law to in, in, to mandate winterizing the this in the future with global warming you know, paradoxically then it may be happening more often uh oh, I, I didn't check that up but you do have, sorry no i shouldn't really say that the um but uh the the wavy the wavy jet stream generally is the thing that's happening more with global warming i don't know specifically about whether texas get having more cold it's it seems plausible but i haven't checked that um so how, how do you protect your home so the, the the main thing is so this just uh if your pipes if you're in texas and your pipes are frozen then the thing to look out for is not to just thaw your pipes and with the without first cutting them off you've got to find a way you, you should know how you can turn it off at the mains and then if you've done that then you can do the proper um then once you've done that then you can thaw it thaw it out and then because otherwise when you thaw out frozen pipes they may have burst and if they've burst but they're frozen then the ice is keep is stopping the water from flooding your house so you we cut it off with a stopcock where it connects to the mains and then you thaw it out and then you see if maybe some water will start seeping from your pipes then you know that and on turn it on cautiously and slowly and um and and if you if it's if it's got a burst pipe it's got to be replaced so um and you can keep you can prevent your pipes from freezing it's a little trick you just leave a little trickle of water flowing just leave a tap slightly on so the water is flowing all, the, all through the pipes all the time and uh, and then if you've got uh, pipes in cupboards and the, and the, the, the cabinets they may get very cold inside so then just opening the cabinet doors a little bit to expose the pipes to the warmer air conditions in your room itself so and then you can buy insulation this pi pipe insulation you can just buy it from the from from any uh, like a hardware store thing and um it's uh it's basically it's kind of a, a cylinder with a slit along one one side of it and, and, a, and a hole in the middle for the pipe you just snap it onto the pipe it's very easy to fit i've got some 
on the on the pipes that I I just popped. I'm I'm not handy at all, but I just I needed to put some insulation on some of the pipes. I'm in a cold place, so I just got some of this and stuck it on. It was this was just for my the builders had done it all properly, but I the, the, but it was a, for a particular thing that needed a bit bit more extra insulation uh, to keep making sure the hot tanks stay hot in cold weather. So I, I got some of this. It was, it's very easy to put on. Um, so anyway, various tips on how to winterize. There's lots of detailed tips there that you can go and look up if you want to find out about how to winterize your home, how to protect it. But th th those are like the main ones. You keep Make sure that you've got a little bit of water flowing through the pipes if it's very, very cold. Just have a little tap dripping so that there's water constantly going through your system. And uh, turn off at the stopcock at the before where the water comes into your house. If you've got frozen pipes and they actually have frozen and you think they could have burst, then turn it off there before you thaw them out. And uh, those, those are the two most important tips, I think. And there's so various other tips there that you can look up if you, if you want to find out about. If, if you're in Texas and you've had unusually cold weather and you're, and you're just wondering how to protect your home, how to leave it, so if you leave your home, for instance, and leave it with just a tap dripping uh, so as to try and um, prevent the, the pipes from thawing and put some insulation on the pipes if you can manage to get hold of some. Anyway, so uh, that, that's that. Oh, there's a thing about, I haven't actually put it up there. I will put a link to it. There's also, if you've got an oil tank, then there's some things you need to do there, but oh, oh, I've, you probably no, I don't think it, I'll, I'll add the link just in case Andy needs it, but I don't I don't I don't suppose many of you need that. Anyway, right. So I'll, I'll stop this, and upload this, and hopefully this is a bit clearer to some of you. And some of you have got just very scared about this, but it's it is it is not surprising. It doesn't mean the entire grid's going to go. It's just a, a, a thing that the it's just a, a bad bad uh, unusual weather for Texas. And they just weren't prepared, and so they're having to do these measures, which involve partial rolling, controlled blackouts, in order to, uh, to in order to distribute it over many customers all the way up to North Dakota, where they they're wondering North Dakota, why am I having a power cut because of something happened in Texas, but uh, it's a single company that that's 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 doing that in order to protect its customers all the way, and. Uh, but you do get oh yeah, and then power outage, power outage, power outage us. Let's just bring that up, and then I'll end. Um, I think that's it. That's Texas. So let's let let it just load the map, so we can see what's happening in Texas. And. Um, so, so those are all the ones that that have it. Uh, that's outage of, of you know that's, that's quite a lot out there, and then then the green ones have got a very little by way of outage. It's just a rough uh, guidance of it. So I, 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 again, I've got a link here to this. But I'll put that in, in, and I'll put I'll bring that up in the new tab so we can look at that as well. It takes a little while to, to build it to build the map for some reason. And uh, this is this is uh, based on so, so it's not a full survey, but it's based on they seem to have quite a lot of customers in of, of people who so, uh, are reporting to them in, in every state. So it gives, gives quite a good overall picture. But or if you look at the if you look at the entire, so those are the countries that have got most, states that have got most. And it, but if you go and look at the United States at any time, you're likely to have, so let's go and look at North Dakota, you're likely to have some power cuts. There might even be some there that just didn't show up on the, on the larger map. No power cuts in North Dakota, unless that's one, it seems, I don't know why that's back. Maybe they've got no data. So there are no power cuts in North Dakota at the moment. Um, so sometimes you don't see anything here, but there's obviously there's some power cuts there. Sometimes the blue ones actually do have a few.
few cases if you click, if you click in and you look at it. Maybe here? No? So it looks as if a lot of the it, it looks as if the 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 aren't the uh I, th I think this is already less than last time I looked at it. There, there, so there's some small power cuts there in Louisiana. So uh, anyway, so you can use this map as well if you want to have a look as to what's happening in your particular state. And so you can see there, for instance, that uh, attracting 6,000 and about what 6,000, whatever that is, and 1,674 have lost their power just now in that particular state. But it's, it's probably more because that's just, they don't have all the customers, uh, data for all the customers there, just to give an idea. And just a very few in that, just 397 out of 10,000 of the people they're tracking. So you get these power cuts. So that might be connected with the Texas one, but it might have just no connection at all. Because any day you go and look at this, you'll see some power outages somewhere that obviously is mostly to do with the Texas thing but just any uh, any day you're going to see power outages somewhere in the United States and if you're in a city they might be a bit scary and it's unusual if you're in a rural area I'm in a very rural area and we just a storm or you know some accident or something it's it tends to be more resilient in a city so you get it much less but in a rural area like where I am then we occasionally get the power just goes fl just flickers or it goes off for five ten minutes or sometimes it'll go off for an hour or for several hours and you just get used to that happening sometimes indeed uh, not the power but my, my internet net went off for uh, five minutes just earlier today the power kept on so that was probably some something to do with the weather anyway anyway then they obviously have people getting repaired very quickly it's, it's, it comes back very quickly or they re redirect or whatever it is they do anyway anyway so that's it so I'm going to upload this and hopefully this will help some of you who've got a little bit scared about what's happening in Texas